is Vasta saying, and in this video, I'll be solving overlapping rectangle problem. The problem is given by Ashkwal Bhaiya under six days, 30 companies challenge. So, so let's start the video and let's understand this problem. The given problem is overlapping rectangle. Let's first understand the problem. Given two rectangles, find if the given two rectangles overlap or not. So we'll be given two rectangles. Suppose this is one of the rectangle and suppose this is the another rectangle. And now we need to guess whether two given rectangles overlap or not. The rectangle is denoted by providing X and Y coordinates of two points, the left top corner and the uh, right bottom corner of the rectangle. So we will be given the left top corner and the right bottom corner of both the rectangles. So these will be the values that will be given. And for each corner, will be given their x and y coordinates. So this will be all the information that we will be given. And with the help of this, uh, this information, we need to find whether two rectangles overlap or not. And it may be assumed that the rectangles are parallel to the coordinate axis. That is, the rectangles are parallel to the coordinate axis. So this is all the information that is given. And let's understand the question better with the help of examples. And let's see how we can solve this problem now. Let's take few of the example to understand the problem better. These are the example. Let's take the axis so that we can draw the rectangle. First rectangles L1 is 0 comma 10. So let's suppose L1 is somewhere here and R1 is 10 comma 0. So let's suppose R1 is somewhere here. So this will be our first rectangle with our L1 0 comma 10 and R1 10 comma 0. Other than this, we are given L2. L2 is 5 comma 5. So let's suppose 5 comma 5 is somewhere here and this will be our L2 and R2 is 15 comma 0. So 15 comma 0 is somewhere here, let's suppose. Okay, so now this will be our second rectangle, right? With L2 uh, having 5 comma 5 and R2 having 15 comma 0. So you can see here that this these rectangles are overlapping. So what will be output? Output will be 1 or 2. Okay, this will be our output and we will, and uh, the explanation says that the rectangles are overlapping, hence the answer is one. So, and similarly, we have the second example where the input is given like this, 0 comma 2 and 1 comma 1 as L1 and R1, whereas L2 is minus 2 comma minus 3 and R2 is 0 comma 2. And uh, if you will draw the rectangle, then you will find that they are not overlapping, hence the output will be zero or false. I hope the question is completely clear to you and the expected time complexity will be order of one and the auxiliary space will be also order of one. So we need to make a logic where we uh, we satisfy, uh, satisfy these uh, complexities because then only we'll be able to get the optimized solution. So let's move, move on to the logic building part and let's see how we can build the logic for the same. And to the logic building part of this question, so what were the question is, we need to check whether the rectangles are overlapping or whether they are not. Okay, so these two, uh, this uh, thing is we need to check. So one thing we can check is by considering uh, all the points, all the points given and comparing it with the second rectangle, right? All the four points uh, we can compare with each other and we can find whether they are overlapping or not. This can be one of the solution. Other solution can be if we check all the scenarios that where the rectangle is not overlapping, then also we can solve this question, right? If we check all the uh, scenarios where rectangle is not overlapping and if if not none of them is getting satisfied, that means our rectangle was overlapping. If any one of them is getting satisfied, then that means our rectangle is not overlapping, right? So we can follow this approach. Now let's see what will be all the scenarios where rectangle will not be overlapping. So these will be all the cases where our rectangle will not overlap, right? Let's see uh, one by one each of them, right? These will be all the cases where our rectangle will not overlap. Let's understand each one of them one by one. So first case is my rectangle one is on the left side of the rectangle two. This can be one of the scenario. In the case two, my rectangle two is on the left side of the rectangle one. Okay, so this is all the left and right scenarios. And they can be at most distant apart. They can be anywhere. Um, uh, the case will be one is on the left and the other is on the right. So these will be two cases. See, we have rectangle two below rectangle one. And in the case four, we have, the case four we have is rectangle one is upper to the rectangle two or it's rectangle one is upper rectangle two. So here we have the up and below situation where rectangle two is far apart, far above than uh, rectangle one or rectangle one is far above than rectangle two. 
So we have covered the left, right, up and down situations, all the situations, and these will be all the cases when our rectangle will not overlap, right? Now let's see how we can make the conditions for each of the uh, case and how we can check each of the case. Now let's make the condition for each one of them so that we can check each of the test cases. So in the first test case, if I check this L2 and if uh, this R1, if they are not overlapping and if L2 is greater than R1, if L2 is X value, okay, we need to just check that these X values because we are now just checking the left and right. The up and down we are checking in the case three and four, right? So we just need to check the left and right. That means if L2 dot X is greater than R2 dot X, in, then, in that case, we are done. We know that they are not overlapping, right? And similarly, we need to check here that if L2 and R2, in these, uh, in, we need to check this L2 and R2. That is if L2 dot X is greater than R2 dot X. In that case, we will be done. Now coming on to the case 3, here what we need to check, we will check this and this value. And here since we are checking the up down, so we will check the y values, right? If L1 dot y is less than R2 dot y, right? If that's the case, that means they are not overlapping, we have some distance in there, okay? And similarly, for the case 4, we will check L2 and R1. That is, if L2 dot y is less than R1 dot y. And if that's the case, then we are done. So we got the conditions for each of the test cases. This is the first one, second one, third one, and fourth one. So we'll make the uh, program for this, checking each of the conditions. And if our, our program satisfies any of the conditions, then that means our rectangles are not overlapping and we'll stop there only. And we'll return false for them. And if they aren't satisfying any of these conditions, that means our rectangle will definitely overlap. So at last we can return true patch after checking each of the condition. So this is the main idea over this. And let's add a general formula so that we can understand what exactly here is happening. Now here I have written all the three things. These are all the three conditions that we'll be checking first for the first uh, two cases. That means these are the cases left and the right one. In the second, we are checking all the uh, third and fourth cases. And if any of the condition is getting satisfied, then I'm returning false. That is, the rectangles are not overlapping. If these conditions are not satisfied, then at last I'll be returning true. So this is all the things I'll be doing, uh, doing and I hope the things are quite clear to you. Now let's move on to the implementation part and I'll be doing the implementation in C++. But since the, quite is, uh, since the things are quite simple, then you can implement it in any language. So now let's move on to its implementation part. Now coming on to the implementation part, this is uh, the question and here I have implemented the same things which I have checked. So this is a function for the same and here we have L1, L2, uh, R1, IL2 and R2. And then I checked the condition for left and right and then for the up and down. And I, after checking both of them, if any of the conditions are true, then I'll return false. And if at last uh, nothing is getting satisfied, then I'll return, I'll return true. So this is a code for this, which is very, very similar to the general formula we have created. So I hope the things are quite clear to you. And if you like this video, then do like, share, and subscribe, and we'll come up with more videos. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And if you have any doubt in this question, then you can definitely ask that doubt in your comment section. We'll be there to uh, clear your queries. So thanks for watching, and we'll meet in the next video.